What's up, my people? This is Showbiz the Adult. So let's talk Terrence Crawford versus Jose Benavidez this Saturday on ESPN. The other day at Jose's media workout, there was a little bit of a skirmish, right? Uh, Bo Mack and Terrence Crawford and company, they were all at the media workout and they were just talking mad trash to each other. Jose didn't back down. He's leaning over the ropes talking trash. And then this happened, okay? They, they almost actually get into a fist fight, start tugging at each other and stuff like that. They had to be broken up. I'm not sure if that is just to hype the fight or do they, you know, really hate each other? I'm going with they hate each other, okay? Bo Mack, he definitely know how to throw logs in the fire. Why would they show up to the media workout in the first place? But I never saw Terrence Crawford as a guy that was like, you know, not authentic. I see him as a real dude. I actually see him as a mean guy when it comes to fighting in the ring. The funny thing about it is they are so similar, all right? Here's some similarities. Both of those guys came from a smaller weight class. Now they're both at welterweight, right? On top of that, they're both undefeated. And the other thing, they've both been shot. Okay, so Terrence Crawford, he got shot during a dice game, and Jose, he was shot while walking his dog. Okay, so Jose was told that he'd never fight again, he shouldn't fight again, but he made his way back. He now he campaigns at welterweight, and he's been doing a pretty good job thus far. Saturday is going to be fireworks. I do think Terrence Crawford is going to win the fight. Why? Because though Jose is a good fighter, TC is special. Let's talk UFC 230. So, as you all probably know by now, Dustin Poirier and Nate Diaz will not be the co-main event for the fight. Now, I'm wondering, can Derek Lewis and Daniel Cormier hold down the main event by themselves? According to Dana White, there's not going to be a replacement fighter for Dustin. Nate Diaz is not going to be fighting. So, I'm not sure if the Weidman and Rockhold fight is going to move up as a co-main event, which it wouldn't bother me at all because the first fight between Rockhold and Chris, that was actually a good fight except for Chris tried to do some weird kick and that just put him in a bad spot where Luke he just took advantage of it right so I'm not sure if that's going to going to move up as a co-main event or not but Nate Diaz has been talking mad trash about Habib I think that he wants to have a title fight with Habib and that to me shouldn't happen couldn't happen wouldn't happen. Actually, I think Tony Ferguson should finally get his fight. He's been in a lineup, you know, he's been waiting for Habib to make weight or whatever. There were, There's always been a reason why those two didn't fight. Now, I know Conor McGregor and Habib, I know they should have their rematch, but Habib, he's been, you know, he has this short suspension, okay? So, during that time, I think Conor McGregor needs some more fights, right, to be prepared for Habib. It really showed in his last fight. Him and Tony Ferguson should probably get it on. Let's talk UFC 232. Bones Jones is back, baby. He's going up against Alexander Gustafson for the second time. Now, this rematch should have been happened, okay? But it didn't happen. The first fight was a bomb burner. Now, we all know that Bones Jones was on that booger sugar, right? So, Bones Jones was just not clean. He had to go to rehab. I, that's why he performed the way he did that fight. Either way, that is something he chose to do, and that fight was a barn burner. Now, I'm expecting it to be the same way. Why? Because Bones Jones just, he hasn't been busy. Last time I seen a picture of Bones Jones, he was looking like uh, T-Bone Jones. <laughs> but personally, I don't know how to feel about Bones Jones. There was a time when he was my favorite fighter, period. I don't care if it was UFC or boxing, Bones Jones was my favorite fighter. Now, you know, and even the first time when he failed the drug test and he was crying, I was a bit empathetic, okay? But it got to a point where I realized the guy is just a flat-out knucklehead. Now, maybe... I don't think he's going to change his ways 
but maybe he realized that he just can't get away with cheating, so maybe he's not going to cheat anymore. If that's the case, I still think Bones Jones is one of the most talented MMA fighters of all time. And, you know, I hope for the best because really if Bones Jones is back in the mix, that is better for me as a combat sports fan, right? I want to see as many great fighters fighting as possible, okay? Who I'll be re rooting for, I don't care as long as the best man wins. But I am happy to see that he's back fighting the Gustafson and they're going to be back for the 232 UFC. And I'm not sure who's all on that card, but as of right now, it looks as though that is the main event. Let me know what you all think. Please comment below. What do you think about that whole melee between Terrence Crawford and Jose? Are they just trying to hype the fight? What do you think about Conor McGregor fighting Tony Ferguson next because Habib is on a short suspension? And let me know what you think about Bones Jones coming back. Do you think he should never fight again? Or are you actually rooting for a bit of a Cinderella story? Showbiz the adult. Listen to showbiz. I'm out. Boxing. 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 Boxing.